coming out with a bit of a twist this year. Last year, we made fried donuts. We kept it very basic. We're upping the ante because this is a baking series. Last week or last month, <laughs> last month we did basic cookies. We did sugar twists. We did chocolate chip cookies. Now we are making French patisserie style pâte à choux, which is the base dough for many of your favorite treats such as eclairs or cream puffs or churros. So we are making these and these. And I made some churros, but I ate them. Happy on the sun, Melissa. So this is a great dough because we can bake it, we can fry it, you can stuff it with savory things, you can stuff it with sweet things. Um, I saw a great recipe, because we're making cream puffs. Um, I saw a great recipe. Instead of filling it with sweet cream, you fill it with cream cheese and lox and you've got brunch. So we are going to get started, as I was saying, sort of leading up to this with people who are here already. Um, this is the kind of recipe that once we start, we kind of have to keep going because we are cooking the dough before we actually bake the dough. Okay, so we're going to start by making our base dough and then we're going to do a bunch of fun things with it. So what I have with me here is all my ingredients. I have got half a cup of butter that I've cubed. It's room temperature for me. If it's not room temperature for you, that's totally fine. Melon cooks, I would cut it now. Grover cooks, I would cut it now as well. Hi, Levies. I've got white sugar. This is the one time that I don't substitute with brown. All-purpose flour. Now, I know we have some gluten-free cooks with us today. You can use gluten-free flour, the same measurement, but you want to add half a teaspoon of xanthan gum. I don't know why, but that's what the recipe told me. We've got kosher salt. Um, when baking, we use kosher salt. We do not use table salt. It's not because we're Jewish. It's because it's better. We've got four eggs. We'll get to those later. We've got whole milk or 2% milk. If you've got a baby in the house, you've got homo milk like me, and we've got half a cup of water. Very simple, basic. So we're actually gonna start all of this by putting some of our ingredients into a saucepan. So I'm going to start by adding my butter. If you're not using butter, you need a solid fat because it's about the weight. So <clears throat> my dog wants to come in. <laughs> come on in, mom. Okay. That's what happens when you have a balcony off the kitchen. Uh, so you want a solid fat. So you could use um, coconut oil. You could use earth balance, non-dairy butter. But either way, it's in cubes. And I'm putting it right into my pot. Come on in. There we go. Okay. We are also adding half a cup of water. Doesn't matter the temperature. A cup of milk. Again, if you're doing this non dairy, it could be all water. I'm going to get an exact measurement here. Okay. So, only you've got a full cup of liquid. We're adding just a quarter of a teaspoon salt. Very little amount, but it's going to sort of make everything a little bit more flavorful. Please repeat what to add to the gluten-free flour. Xanthan gum, half a teaspoon. All right, I've got a quarter of a teaspoon of kosher salt. If you ever have a recipe for baking that doesn't include salt, add salt, it's lying to you. The salt will bring up the sweet. It'll make everything tastier. And we're doing two teaspoons of white sugar. Everybody with me? All right, I got a thumbs up from Arlene. Thank you, Arlene. The Grovers are thinking about it. Okay. So I've got everything in my pot. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna put it on the stove. I'm gonna put it on medium heat. 
We're going to stir it while it's on the heat and we want it to come to a simmer. Not a crazy boil, just a simmer. Do you mind going downstairs for me? What do you want? Um, I need one of, I have lost it. I brought one up and it's totally gone. Hard margin. Okay. So if you've got an assistant in the kitchen, that would be helpful right now to watch the pot. I'm going to quickly measure out my flour. Because what we're going to do once it comes to a simmer, we're going to let it simmer for a minute, get the butter and the milk and the sugar nice and cooking, and then we're going to add our flour all at once. So you just want to be ready. So what I'm going to do is measure my flour right now and have it ready to go. And I'm going to measure it and level it. So we did this last time. With um, the yes, we accidentally added too much sugar because we, because um. I read the measurements okay. wrong. I actually added tablespoons instead of teaspoons. Is there a problem? It's going to be very sweet, but it's not going to ruin your baking. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Maybe you won't stuff yours with lox and cream cheese. Okay. So I'm measuring a cup. The way to make sure it's perfectly measured is to take your knife, cut down into it, make a big mess as you're going, and level it off. Now I've got a perfect cup of flour. I know there's no air pockets in it. All right. You're going to want a wooden spoon or a spatula to help you out here. Come with me to the stove. Did you see the mess that I was hiding in the back of the kitchen or was I sneaky? Not sneaky. <laughs> okay. My butter is melting. If you had cold butter, this might this step might take you a little bit longer. How's everybody doing? All right, I'm getting a nod from Cheryl. We're feeling positive. Has anyone here made these before? Am I preaching to the choir at all? All right. I feel like when I make blintzes, everyone's like, hey, I know how to make a blintz Ellie. So we're trying something new today. So basically what we're going to do here is we're cooking our liquids and our fats. Then we're gonna add our flour. We're gonna cook the flour in the pot. Then we're gonna move everything into our stand mixer. Or if you have a, um, a hand mixer, that's totally fine. And we're gonna add the eggs. The eggs is the part that I want to pay the most attention to. We're gonna get there when we get there, don't worry. Okay. So I'm stirring just to make sure nothing is burning at the bottom. We don't want ground butter, as delicious as that is. Okay. So my butter is completely melted. Now I just want it to come to a simmer. Carmela, you're doing triple duty right now. So much respect. Okay, I've come to a simmer. I'm going to let that simmer for exactly a minute. When I say exactly, I mean approximately because I didn't note the time when it started simmering. Is anybody else simmering yet? Um, ours is a little bit lumpy. Is it supposed to be like that? Uh, if it's lumpy, it might just be that extra sugar you have in there. No, it's because we added this the uh, flour in a little bit later. Oh, you weren't supposed to add the flour yet, my friend. Oh, seriously? <laughs> you can start over or you can we can work together here. Because I'm gonna add my flour to you and I'm gonna show you what to do, okay? That's so okay. I've got my flour, I'm adding it, I'm turning my my um burner to low. So turn your burner to low, Eliana. And we're gonna add the flour all at once. And I'm gonna start mixing it up. It's going to look curdled and lumpy, just like yours probably does. But as you stir, it's going to come together into a ball. And what we want to do is keep mashing that ball up against the sides and bottom of the pan. And that is going to cook the flour and create our pate choux. And the way that it's going to take about two to three minutes. 
but you're going to know that it's done when it's smooth and shiny. And as you're turning it and mixing it around, it starts to leave a film at the bottom of your pan. Ellie, Very what, Ellie, what temperature is it supposed to be at when it, when we put in the flour? Is it you put it to low. Low. Yeah. Now let's we add the flour. So see, it's come together quite quickly. Okay, Ellie. Um, when do we add the flour? Once it comes to a simmer and it's been simmering for a minute, you add like the flour simmer, all at once. What do you mean by simmering? Exactly? Like little bubbles. Oh, here it is. Okay. Like before a boil. If you let it go a little too long, that's fine. And just see, I keep mashing it against the sides and bottom of my pot. Yeah, we're cooking for another minute. Just want to make sure I was right. Do we put in the eggs? Not yet, Sandra. Do not touch the eggs. Oh, yes, Ava. All right. So we can see. I've got a very light film on the bottom of my pan. It's probably hard to see with the light that I have. But the dough is nice and smooth. This is lovely ball. I'm going to take it off. And I'm going to put it into my mixer or your bowl, whatever you're doing. And now I'm going to wait with all of you while you get to the next step with me. So I want this to come to room temperature. To help facilitate that, I'm gonna just whip it on low with a paddle attachment. Okay. So I'm gonna let that go for a bit. And now I am here to troubleshoot who has trouble. Yes, Lesbies. The, the trouble is they can't see the stove where it's not. Oh, so nothing I can help with. <laughs> okay. We have, we're, we're, we're pretty far from it being a dough. Do you want to show me? Yep, yeah, Nate, move out of the way for a sec because I don't want it to hurt you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It looks like, like, like sort of. Do we, did we get the measurements correct? Yes. One cup of liquid, half a cup of butter, one cup of flour? Half a cup. Half a cup of what? Butter. Yeah, yeah, half a cup. One stick is half a cup, correct? Yeah, 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 yeah. She called me dumb. Uh, um, yeah, okay, so we still have to just keep mixing. So you can keep mixing. Or should can I add get to a simmer, um, Carmela? Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. It did get to a simmer. Oh. Okay. Was, no, just, was it was it sort of simmering? Was it sort of boiling before you added it? No. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna just Tuna. figure it out. Tuna. Okay, I see you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so it should have clumped into a ball. That's our goal here. My ball is now cooling down in the mixer. This is why I said it's sort of a tough one because once it starts, it kind of keeps going. Let's see, Lynn. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Nailed it. I'm going to get too excited. I'm going to wake the baby. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk eggs. So when we're adding the eggs to the mix, which is the next and final part of this recipe, we're not adding by egg. We're adding by like volume. And we want to get to a certain consistency. The goal of what we want it to look like is for it to be smooth, shiny. And when you pick up the paddle, it should come down in a ribbon, not like a soupy ribbon. It should fall onto itself and it should hold its shape for a moment before blending in. So we're going to crack four eggs. We're going to whisk them up and we're going to add them in four very slow additions. And we're only going to do that once our dough has cooled off because we don't want scrambled eggs. 
I learned this the hard way. It's, it, it, I cried. I had this whole plan of like delivering COVID packages to people and it was disgusting. Anyways, I digress. They came out pretty on the fourth try and the second trip to the supermarket. So, Crafty 4X. You see, most of our chefs here have already cracked their eggs. You're ahead of me. And so, you'll notice that this recipe doesn't have baking powder, no baking soda, no yeast. Our eggs are what are going to give our dough lift. So I'm going to give them a very good whisk. Like I wanna get a lot of air into these. Okay. I feel like this is a poor angle. My whole body is whisking along with it. There we go. It may help to do it in a measuring cup because we're going to pour everything, but I will leave it up to you all. Moving right along. All right. So this has been stirring about and cooling off for a few minutes. It's not room temperature, but it's not piping hot anymore. So I feel confident that I can put this in. <clears throat> We're going to keep our mixer on low. If you are using a hand mixer, keep it on the lowest setting. Hello, tiniest Grover. You're such a good sous chef. Distracted, distracted. Okay. Oh my God, thanks, Nicole. My element was still on. Okay, this is how we set the house on fire. Okay, so I'm gonna put my mixer on the lowest setting and I'm going to add a quarter of my egg mixer. I'm gonna let that fully combine. It's going to look curdled and it's going to look messy, but trust me, it'll come together. Another sploosh. It's all combined, I'm adding a little bit more. My fourth addition of eggs, I'm going to go very slowly, like a teaspoon at a time. Um, if you do not get the consistency that I have by the end of it, if it's still too dry, you can whisk up another, yeah. Um, what do we do after like we're like it goes into a dough form? It once it goes into a ball, you put it in your mixer, you let it cool down for a few minutes by whipping it around, and then you can add the eggs. Okay. So yes, so to troubleshoot, if it's still dry after you're gonna whisk up another egg, you're gonna add a teaspoon at a time. If we go too quickly with the eggs, you kind of have to start from scratch. So let's not do that. All right. So I can tell already, like it's getting nice and shiny, but it's definitely not going to form a ribbon. I'm going to add a little bit more. Can check it now. That's definitely not a ribbon. We're going to keep going. What do you mean by a ribbon? 
I am going to show you exactly what I mean when I get there. I think I'm a step ahead of you, so you'll be able to see. But basically, it means the batter's going to like drip down. All right, let's see how that looks. See, it's like sort of slowly clomping down. That is not a ribbon. I'm going to add another teaspoon of egg. What speed do we run the mixture as we add the egg? Low. And as you can tell, that it is getting very glossy and pretty. Let's see here. Not quite. I'm going to add one more teaspoon and see where we're at. And I think we'll be perfect. Is it supposed to look really gloppy at the beginning? Yes, it's going to look oh. super gloppy. Okay, good. At what speed? Sorry, I'm, we missed that. Was it one? So the best test for me is I actually, oh yeah. Oh. Low and low. slow. Low and slow, okay. Low and slow. Okay. See, this is not, I'm gonna see if I can get a better view of that. So it's forming a V and it's dripping down. We're almost there. I'm going to add half a teaspoon. Okay. The finicky thing about this is it also, like, if it's really humid, that can affect how much egg you use. What did I just add? I didn't add anything. I'm just adding some more egg arlene, slowly, slowly. Oh, melons, you're doing good. That's exactly what I want. So when I drop it down, it's going in this little ribbon, it's slowly incorporating itself into the mixture. Because you don't want it too wet. Great. I am happy. Where is Eliana? I don't see. Okay, thank you. Bye. Pardon me? Hi, Eliana. <laughs> okay. So everyone, I've got this beautiful, shiny batter. It's like a very thick pancake batter. While everyone's, <clears throat> while everyone's sort of working on that, I have my baking sheet lined with parchment paper. And I'm going to use this little trick. I'm going to brush it using a pastry brush. I'm going to brush it with some water. This is going to help give extra moisture in the oven to make these puff and dry out, but not burn. Marini, what are you doing? I just want some drops of water on there. Okay. Is everyone okay if I fill a piping bag? I don't get any arguments, but I don't get any thumbs up. What's up, Lynn? I guess, do you want to show, how, how much egg are we supposed to be, are we supposed to be putting the whole amount of egg in it? I was left with about a tablespoon or two of egg. Yeah, by the end. It. So it's probably three and a half eggs. No, we need a bit more. Okay, thanks. Please. No problem. I'm going to fill my pastry bag now. I'm going to use a little trick. Normally I yell at my husband to come down here and help me. He's at the office 
a cup is a great stand-in for a husband. Great. I've got my cup here. I'm making a pastry bag because I ran out and got one. However, you can just as easily use a giant Ziploc bag with the corner cut off. Yeah, cut the end. Putting someone in there. Hi, Alex. Okay. Can I um, ask you a question? We can't find our, we have pastry bags, but we are, are whatever those things are. The tips? <laughs> the tips are missing. So, yeah, so I actually, I'm not using a tip right now. I just cut uh, the end off. And let's say we don't want to make them tonight. So should we just not even, we won't cut the tip? Yes. Yeah, so if you don't want to make them tonight, you put them in the pastry bag, you tie off the pastry bag, you put them in the fridge, and that's it. Okay, perfect. Um, if you wanted to make them tonight, but not fill them tonight, you can bake them and put them in the fridge. You can also put them in the freezer for up to three months in a well-sealed bag, and then just crisp them up in the oven again. It's a punchy dessert, but it's a great make-ahead dessert. Also, if you fill it, and put whipped cream in it and freeze it, it tastes like ice cream. So it's like a win-win no matter what you do. So I've got my dough. I'm gonna put half my dough in this bag and I'm gonna put half my dough in another bag for churros. See, this is just as good as having a husband. It's holding the, the dough for me, this is great. <laughs> Thank you, Susan, I appreciate you. Ellie, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Yeah, do you use all of the eggs or just use the eggs until it looks like yours? Until it looks right. Okay, thanks. Which could mean you need more. Like if it's a really dry day, you may need more. So I've got this bag. I'm also gonna prepare my other bag. I'm using a very large polluted tip. This is gonna be for eclairs and churros. We will get to that when we get to that. All right, Cheryl, you are doing great. I see what's happening there. Okay. All right. So we're gonna do two types of piping here. So I've got my, oops, I've got my line of parchment paper. It's been brushed with water. And I'm gonna make little mounds with my plain um, tip here. You can use any tip, it just, it, it will actually show the ridges when you bake it. So you can be cognizant of that. Let this just sit straight. I am going to make little two inch mounds. Hopefully you can see. And I'm gonna space them apart because they will puff if we did this right. Don't worry if you've got this little tip on the top. You're gonna take a fingertip, dab it in water, and just push that little guy down. I'm gonna do a few more and then I'm gonna show you how to make an eclair. And that little bit of extra egg that you have is perfect for an egg wash. Mm -hmm. 
All righty. <clears throat> tap, tap, tap. Those are really pretty. Uh, thank you so much, my friend. Let's see if they work. Um, now to make an eclair, again, I've got my fluted tip. I'm just gonna make rows. Um, is this good? Who asked that? It's Ava. Show her, show her. Let's see, sweetie. Perfect. It's not is too it a little. Is it a little runny? Yeah. It's a little runny. Yeah. Okay, you're not going to like what I say next. Oh, no. <laughs> you can't add more flour to make it thicker like we would with another cookie dough. What you would have to do is make a half batch of that first step and add it. But by then you'll be like a professional at it. This is why these make me cry. But so we're succeeding. Too, too runny. Yeah, because I don't think that'll hold up when you pipe it. Grovers are making some beautiful puffs over there. Mm. Not to knock you, Lynn. You're doing great. Okay. So I have got some eclairs here. How many did it make? I made a half a batch made um, about 20. That's a lot. It so makes a lot. You're gonna be eating puffs for days. That's surprising since it looks quite like it looks quite small. You know what? Because you're not making big ones, I'll show you what happens when you make them gigantic. They take up a lot of filling. Um also is kind of takes longer to cook surprisingly not really that's weird because what it does is it hollows out so it kind of doesn't matter how much you have okay you so i bought the rest of my egg i added a little bit of water and i'm just going to brush the tops this will make it look golden and beautiful but don't brush too hard because if you have any nice shapes like um my eclairs are gonna lose that ridging. Now, if you want to add something here, like if you want to make these savory, you could add some everything bagel spice to the top. You could add like Parmesan cheese. Uh, if you got really fancy, you would put something called a cracklin on top. I have not attempted those. If you want What's to- What's that? A cracklin? It's yeah. basically a sugar dough that you put on top and it makes it look fancier and it is an insane amount of work for a very little game. Um, Why would you do that? Because it looks cool. But I just want it to be delicious and I want to eat it tonight. Um, These are going to go in the oven at 400 degrees. Mm -hmm. They're going to go in there for 20 minutes. And in those 20 minutes, you cannot look at them. If you have a light, you may turn it on. If you open the oven, they will de-poof. You will cry. You will start from the beginning. So you're going to bake them for 20 minutes. You're going to lower the temperature to 350. You're going to bake for another 10 to 15 more. At that time, you're allowed to open up your oven. And you'll know that they're done when you pick them up. And you give a tap and they sound hollow. Okay, the recipe like, that you gave us says bake for 20 minutes, then reduce the oven to 250. That is a typo. Okay. That is why you come to the lesson and don't rely on the recipe because there's usually an error. Okay. Um, yeah, 350. Um, you can open up your poof and if it's hollow inside and quite dry, you know you are good. If it's getting dark on the bottom, pull those suckers out. Ellie, is this and when, now? Yeah. What did you do? Like it, it was, was it was clumpy at the oh, bottom. Oh, you just kept mixing. Yeah. And did you say 350 instead of 400? So no, oh. you start at 400 oh. for 20 minutes. Oh. Then you reduce to 350 for 10 to 15. So Sandra, if yours is watery, unfortunately, you might have to do what I told the Kirshen family to do. Mm -hmm. Um which is make a half batch of the flour mixture and add it in. Yes, Cassandra, that's right. 350 for 10 to 15. Um, when if it doesn't, if it, sorry. No, yeah. 
I was just asking if it ends up to, like deflate or something like that. Will it not taste good? Why does it matter so much? It'll it's... taste good. It just won't be right. Yeah, I guess it's kind of annoying. <laughs> um, also, because we want to fill them, and I'm going to show you that next. Um, I didn't preheat my oven because the smoke detector always goes off and will wake the baby. So I'm going to set these aside for a little bit. When they're done. You don't want to keep them on the tray because the heat from your baking pan is going to turn the bottoms quite dark. So what you want is ideally if you have a tray like this, a cooling rack to put them onto. If you don't have that, just put them on a cooler tray. All right. So while I start heating up oil to show you how to make churros, I'm going to show you what to do with the finished product. Where's my pan? There it is. I've got a nice, hey Morty, what are you doing? I've got some vegetable oil. This is actually, I used this last time. You can reuse frying oil, as long as it doesn't have a weird taste to it. I didn't fry fish, I fried cream puffs. How much oil? You want about an inch an in the inch. pan. Thank you. Because we are deep frying, it is Hanukkah. The healthiest holiday of the year, if you will. So I'm going to start heating this on medium heat. You don't want boiling oil. That is dangerous. I will tell you now, if your oil does do something crazy, like start smoking or God forbid light on fire, immediately remove it from the heat. Do not put water on it. Throw some flour on it. That'll put out the fire but you guys are all safe, you're not gonna do that. Okay, I have cream puffs here that I made yesterday. Get down, Mortimer. God. This is happening, okay. Okay, so I have cream puffs here. I'm gonna show you how to fill them and then I'm gonna show you how to decorate them. So in this piping bag with a tip, I have whipped cream which I actually stabilized, which means I just made it like able to keep its shape and flavor using Jello. So one cup of whipping cream and half a Jello package will give you a really tasty whipped cream. Um, if you don't have that, you could just add one tablespoon of icing sugar and a little bit of vanilla. But this is a nice trick if you ever want to frost a cake in whipped cream and you don't want it to melt. Jello will keep it standing because I guess the fake gelatin in it. So. I got a piping bag with that. And because I kind of want to mimic the souffle, I've also got some blueberry jelly. I'm going to put a little bit of that in here as well. I'm using piping tips because the piping tips can sort of break through the puff. Um, but if you don't have a piping tip, as you guys mentioned, you can just poke a hole in it using a knife and then just like force your piping bag in. <clears throat> So I've got some jelly in there, jam. I don't know the difference. Into the bottom of my puff here. Actually, I'm gonna poke a hole. I'll show you what I mean. I got a very sharp knife. I'm gonna poke a hole right in the middle. Poke. And you are going to fill the puff until it starts fighting back. So I just want to get this. <laughs> I'm going to freeze for a second. I'm going to add some jam in there. Could you um, either repeat what you said about the whipped cream or just send an email? About yeah, it. yeah, it's just a cup of whipped cream and half a jello package of uh, vanilla pudding. And, and that's it, you whip it all together? Whip it all together, okay. I'm filling this up, I can hear it sort of puffing.
All right. Can you do without the jello? You can do without the jello. You just add um, some icing sugar for flavor. We're saving it for later. Do we add the tip in it if we want a tip? Um, it would be helpful, but then I would put it in like a Ziploc bag so that you don't um, like get fridge flavor on it. Um, I asked, uh, I asked, how do we not do we? How do we add the tip? Yeah. Ah, if, this, if, this, if the stuff is already in there, how do we add the tip on? You can't, you kind of have to start over. You would have to pour it out or start a new bag. What okay. I do, if I have it in a bag without a tip and then I want to use a tip, is I'll make a separate bag. There's a dog. <laughs> I'll make a, take a separate bag, put the tip in, and then put the bag that you had already filled in there. So you're sort of double bagging it. What flavored jello do you add to the whipped cream to stabilize it? I use vanilla. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make this extra fancy, and then we're gonna make churros. I've got melting wafers. They're blue and white. I'm Whoa, gonna melt them. nice. <laughs> you can buy them at Michael's. And I'm gonna fill one more puff. Where did you go to the microwave? I am melting it in the microwave. Okay. You disappeared off screen. <laughs> I just, yeah. Um, you could do a double boiler on your stove top, but that's a lot of extra work. I'm gonna do one more puff. I'm gonna fill it up. See, so these are gigantic. It's taking a lot of uh, whipped cream to fill these. Ellie, it's Melissa. Can you hear me? I can. So when you said you're adding the vanilla jello, you mean you're adding vanilla pudding? Yes. So you make the vanilla pudding or you're just putting in the powder? No, I literally just add the powder. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Keep stuffing these with whipped cream. You don't want puffed up enough. Okay, got a few puppies here. Let's see how our chocolate's doing. Probably need another 45 seconds. Okay. Um, and the last thing, if you are making a churro, this is how you fill that. You're gonna make three holes in the bottom. And you're gonna fill each hole. That way you get a consistent fill. We're just gonna keep going. So Ellie, is the churro just like a different shape? Like is that all that makes it the churro? <laughs> no, so this is, I misspoke, this is the eclair. The churro is fried. And so that's what I'm heating up my oil for. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. My oil should be just about ready. There we go. That's a nice filled eclair. And now we're gonna dip them in chocolate to make them extra festive and delicious. Is it possible to over mix the batter? Is that a, can that happen? Over mix which? The original batter. Is it possible to over mix that? I don't think so. Like if you just end up mixing it too long? Uh, it shouldn't over. <laughs> Why are you still mixing it? Because I'm afraid to make it watery. <laughs> so I'm gonna, but you can't, okay, no, you can't over mix it, but let's see how it looks. Slow down. Yeah, you need more. Keep going, girl. I'm very scared. I don't like the you have to start over part. So no, it's very it. intimidating. Very nice. nice. There we go. We've got Hanukkah cream puffs. 
and a Fanica Eclair. Who's ready for churros? So I know that my oil is ready. Not if it's boiling, because that means we did something bad. But I know that it's ready if I add a little bit of dough and it's going to bubble around it. Go away, pretty. It's not ready. I'm going to turn up the heat. I got scared. Okay, while I let that heat up, does anybody have any questions about what we've done so far? We do. Yes. So I, I just put the baby to bed. So I missed what you did for the for the topping. Like, what did you? I literally just melted chocolate. Okay. And then so we have our chocolate, and we'll we can. So I melted chocolate. I'm using candy melts because they dry really quickly. Oh, but smart. You could also add a little bit of coconut oil to um regular chocolate, and it'll harden like those magic shells that you use to put on your ice cream. Okay. Perfect. But if you put two colors, you get a marble. So, um, okay, but it has to cool, I assume. So we're not there yet. You want it to be cool. That, I made those yesterday. Oh, I see. Okay. I cheated. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So those are my cups. I can freeze them now. They will taste like they are filled with ice cream. Wait, Thank they're you. already done? Don't, don't, aren't they supposed to take a while? So with the magic of television, mine were already ready. But I baked them yesterday, let them cool completely, put them in the fridge, and then filled them. If you fill them hot, all your insides are going to be ready. Okay. Okay, so, churro time. The little thing of dough that I put in, it started bubbling right away. If you are a little person, I'm asking you now to have a parent help you, because I don't want to be responsible for burns. But to make a churro... I'm gonna squeeze a little bit out and then I'm gonna cut it and let it fall in. This is our fried content for the day, everybody. So this is our Hanukkah content. Put it over there. Churros. Let's Churros. <laughs> Ellie, when you're safely right. not beside boiling oil, oh, can you take a look at my uh, batter? I'm, I'm looking. Girl, I think you got it. You did it! Yay! I'm letting these cook. And I'm also getting some cinnamon sugar ready to roll them in because it's not a churro unless it's super cinnamony and sugary. Because it's kind of uh, we're going blue and white. Any other time of year, you'll hear me complain that blue food is inedible, but on Hanukkah, we eat blue. I'm keeping an eye on my donuts as they are turning a nice, um, um, what's the word I want? Brown? But not a nice brown. Um, that's when we want to flip them over. So I'm combining a little bit of sugar. I'm going to add cinnamon as well. Not even close to ready. It's important that your oil is the right temperature as well. If it's too cool when you put your dough in, you're going to get a really greasy donut. If it's too hot, you're going to get a burnt on the outside and raw on the inside donut. What temperature should the oil be at? Of the, the Grovers are asking what temperature should the oil be at? I was heating it up at um, on medium heat, so it would heat up slowly. And then I knew it was ready when I added a little bit of dough and bubbles formed around it. I'm making a little cinnamon sugar here. Okay, I'm gonna let you see what's happening with my churros. Let me heat up my oil a little bit. You can tell that they're actually getting um, 
hollow in the middle, just like our cream puffs. Morty, can I help you? Okay. Eliana, you look concerned. Ellie, are we taking the donuts and putting them on towel paper? So, no, because I want the grease to actually have the sugar and cinnamon stick to it. Okay. Give them a good shake, though. Okay. Has anybody piked or started frying and they want to show off while I'm waiting here? Ava's ready to show off. In the meantime, Ellie, is this one ready? Oh, that looks so good. So oh. then I put it in the sugar? Right into the sugar. Okay. I'm going to cut into this so you guys can see what it looks like. Will this recipe come out just as nice as gluten-free flour, Arlene? I've never tried it, but the internet tells me yes. Good, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Mm, mm, I, am, I won't eat these in front of you because I'll make a mess, but I'm really excited too. So that's how cool you wanted to look. Yes, Momo, what can I do for you? Need another plate. Oh. Um, Ali, can I, I? I missed the part where you showed how you. What did you put inside? Was that whipped cream? I did whipped cream. I, sweet, I sweetened it with pudding mix. You can sweeten it with sugar, and I also added blueberry jam to make it seem like a sweet vanilla. Uh -huh. okay. So I alternated putting whipped cream and jam in. So we have pudding and pie filling. So I think we'll do that. Delicious. How much do you do you put? Like how do you I've never done it? So I I make, I made one second. He needs a treat. I made a cup of 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 cream. Like I pour a cup of working cream into the mixer. But how much you put into the actual cup? Yeah, because it looks pretty full. And yeah, until it starts resisting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it'll start to squirt out the top. And that's a good sign that you're done. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks. Golden, that's what I wanted. Golden brown. Okay. This is golden brown. That's what I want. And actually, you can see there's a line. You can see better on this. Yeah, there's a line forming, and that's a sign that it's cooking on both sides and puffing up. All right. Just about nearing the end of our hour, so I am going to. We experimented with vegan butter and almond milk. Oh, let me know how that goes. I'm gonna roll these in sugar now. This time I actually turned my burner off. Thank you again, Nicole, for that. Evan's gonna be very happy when he finally gets home. He normally does not come home to treats. All right, let's bring it back here. Let's shake these up. Oh. My sugar didn't really stick, which I guess means they aren't greasy. They're hot, but I'm gonna take a bite. Um, Ellie, once it beeps, we put it to 350 for 10 to 15 minutes. Correct. Thank you. You're very welcome. So you can see inside, it's nice and hollow. It has pockets. That means we did it right. I don't know why my cinnamon sugar isn't sticking. It's making me sad, but I guess it means my oil was at a good temperature. I am done. Does anyone have questions for me? Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You were all very good sports baking along with me. You're so welcome, Melissa. Um, 
but I want to make sure I've troubleshot everybody before we go. Uh, Ellie, if it doesn't stick to the cinnamon and sugar and you really, really want it to, um, what can you do? Uh, you can make Mortimer. Uh, you can make a glaze. So just uh, icing sugar and a few tablespoons of milk or, um, or water. Stir that up until it's a nice consistency. You can dunk it in that and that's an easy donut glaze. I don't know why it didn't stick. It stuck when I did it yesterday. I did a test run. I'm just gonna sprinkle it on. Oh, it's still good. All right. Okay, I think everyone's good. Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Um, thank you, Ellie. Hopefully I will see everybody in various forms of our Hanukkah celebrations, either our virtual or our live. Um, and if I don't see you, have a very happy Hanukkah, everybody. I hope you all get to actually celebrate with your families this year. And if you don't, I hope your virtual celebrations are just as lovely as in person. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm going to eat this now. Mm. Oh my God. Bye, guys. Bye.